Hey everyone, welcome to another video in which we'll be discussing about REST architecture, what it is and how it works. Basically, so there's a lot of confusion among people what REST is, what is a RESTful API, what does it mean to actually create a RESTful API and it's, it's not really that complicated. So let's just see what it actually is in this video. So REST stands for Representational State Transfer. So there's an E somewhere in representational. I don't know where which E is that, but well, that makes it REST, right? So REST basically is a style, is a design, is a, you know, it's, you can say that it's something which is not a specification. It's just there. It's just there as a style you can follow, but it's not a formal specification. That means you don't have a formal document which would validate whether you have what you have created on a backend is a restful api or not right so it's just a style you have to follow now rest consists of http methods status codes response types stuff like that basically uh, if you are creating a restful web api http methods status codes and response types is the stuff you would be creating the apis over right so coming to http methods there are a lot of methods for HTTP. I've just listed some of the uh, main ones which REST API use if you're using REST. So if you're using GET, that means you want to get something from the server, right? If you're using POST, if you're sending a POST request to a server, that means in REST, in REST style, that means you want to create a resource. If you're using a PUT method, that means that you want to replace a resource with the one being sent. In the body of the client right similarly patch means that you want to update the resource on the server on the endpoint and maybe if it's if it's not present then you want to create it and delete means deleting the resource right so um, coming to status codes for um, the HTTP protocol we have uh, if you have a status code in 100 to 199 it is usually informational response it's not very helpful um maybe in i have seen i guess i have seen 100 responses in if you are trying to connect to a web socket or something so that's kind of a use case of 100 to 199 status code responses if you are in 200 to 299 status codes that is indicating some sort of successful response from the server right so 200 response code means that it is okay and the most common i think the most common status code on the web is 200 okay right so 201 is also a successful status code that the resource is created or something i don't remember exactly but that's what it stands for 300 to 399 status codes would mean that there's some sort of redirect happening whether it's temporary redirect or permanent redirect from the server or you know any any sort of variation of redirect 400 to 499 means there's some sort of client error that is client requested a resource which is either not allowed by that particular client um, either it is not found so client just made a 404 request which is like one of the most common um, you know it's kind of a meme as well people make use of 404 not found all the place but this is where it comes from that is the HTTP status code so 404 stands for not found. Then there are like 401, 402, method not allowed, stuff like that. So 400 to 499 means there's some sort of problem coming from the client itself. Then 500 to 599 means that there's some sort of problem at server. So you requested a resource and the server crashed due to bad programming or whatever it is. Or maybe the server is down, so whatever it is. So that would be categorized as server error. Right, so... Um, the problem with the rest rest style is basically that it's not a formal specification just like we discussed before then a lot of guesswork is involved in restful apis now just like we discussed that we have the get put post patch methods like these now what would you use if you want to create um, maybe a user on your website like when the user registers what do you want to do? You want to send a POST request or a PUT request? Do you want the server to respond with a 200 OK status code or maybe 201 content created status code? Do you want the server to respond to 302 redirect or 301? 
So yeah, this is basically the problem, right? So there's a lot of guessing work involved in REST architecture. So also, if you're on front end, if you're coding some data, you don't know what um, the endpoint would respond to, right? So the shape of incoming data is usually unknown. Now, of course, we have solutions like TypeScript and stuff, which can make this life easy, but there's not, not, a, not a official schema there's no schematics to REST API, right? Or a RESTful architecture. So these things could be technically fixed with other implementations, which are like GraphQL, right? So GraphQL is a better alternative, but we'll discuss what it is in depth for, you know, in some other video, because that's not really the topic for this one. But GraphQL addresses a lot of problems, which we just saw in the RESTful architecture. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope this video gave you an insight on what REST is, how to work with RESTful, you know, how to create RESTful stuff and some sort of problems with REST API as well. So that would be all for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next one.